The Olden World Written by Tsar Yoshi Chapter 740 Too Little Late The lay appeared in a burst of light on the deck of the Immortal Dream, surrounded by swirling storm winds and driving rain that were forcefully repelled by the Harmony Comet's pink, shimmering aura. She had just enough time to register that it hadn't been a trap after all before her unicorn teleported away again, leaving no time for fangs. Big brother! Gwendolyn let out a frustrated yell held in Gazelle's paws nearby. I was going to stay at Stormhof! Shant, Gazelle chided, holding the filly firmly. I told you, that castle tonight is no place for children. You would get hurt. Gwendolyn gave him a fiery stare. That's the point. Whatever you've stood up to tonight has no more right to endanger my constituents than it does me. You're supposed to call it off, not take me away. Before Gazelle could reply, two more flashes deposited Felicity and Senesee, and then their unicorns were gone as well. Ah! Valet blinked, unsure who to approach first or even what to say. The comet kept them safe and dry on the deck, but the storm was loud enough no one would have heard them arrive. She kind of wanted to get below. Well, here. Here we are then. Uh, Felicity apprehensively looked at the ground. Valet, um, about all that, where? Valet decided to ignore the feuding sphinxes in favor of her real friends, striding over and putting a wing around both other mares. Hey, she said. Look, you survived. I lost all that sword coming to get you, and now we've got to deal with Gazelle being back on the boat, but it's gonna be over soon. Let Stormhoof burn for all I care. I've been running around one too many times for anything happening there to be my problem. It's gonna be okay. Huh, yes. Phil napped and daringly rescued. That's what happened. Oh, Felicity sagged slightly. I wish. Valet, we need to talk. Senese frowned disapprovingly, but Valet shook her head. How important is it? I know you're pretty shaken, but if you're feeling up to doing anything other than resting, there's a mare down below who's kind of having a kid. Ah, Felicity smiled sadly. I'm afraid you might not want my help there after I've said my piece, but if you do, she'll be doing that all night long. We need to talk right now. Ah, here? Valet frowned at the deck, crashing thunder, drowning out bits and pieces of a friend's voice, and forcing her to lean in closer to listen. Uh, Felicity took a deep breath. Jaya, Isvaldi, Stormhoof, Everlast, the first consumed our foal hoods with lawlessness and struggle for survival, the second ravaged our bodies with contaminated drinking water and stole our mother, the last two are today's two provinces who have it out hardest for Cerosian kind and are close allies as well. We hate all of them, all three of us, badly. For decades it's been our first and only goal to make them pay. Valet blinked. Wait, say that again? She's telling the truth, Senesee sighed, staring out at the storm and looking upset. This is everything we didn't tell you all those months ago, Felicity continued. When we thought you would be sympathetic to us, yet you asked to be friends without knowing dangerous things or getting involved. Lord Jai's demise, we've been working on him for years. He was easily manipulatable, and it wasn't hard for us to nudge him into a situation without us realizing where we would be forced to off him in a way that didn't look like premeditated murder. The fall of Isvaldi? They took themselves down before we could do anything, but we had a very extensive plan to tarnish their old administration's legacy beyond even what it had been, enshrining Percival's father in infamy that would be remembered for generations. The lords of Stormhoof and Everlast, presently in a tower with no standing army courtesy of you because I played the damsel in distress. Valet folded her ears. Wait, what? Senese winced. You remember that party you accidentally walked in on early in the tournament, where you found me and a bunch of other low-level fighters? Those were... friends. I didn't want them thinking we were close, since I hadn't told them we were leaving you out of things, but they're the ones who are presently heading up the tower we... had you clear out for us. They know their things, 
and in the morning, the royal families of Stormhoof and Everlast will be gone. The lay slowly tilted her head. But you... She furrowed her brows. Wait, on the ship just earlier? Staged. Felicity's tail pressed downward, almost tucked between her legs. With Gazelle's help, a Vosidelian stun ray from him, some dramatizations from me preventing any of you from checking the body, larceny stalling for time so you couldn't intercept us before we reached the castle. I'm so sorry. We did think hard about our priorities, but revenge had to win out. Valet tried to meet her eyes. So you were lying about being done and wanting to join us. Well, it was a half-truth, Felicity swallowed. We are done now, just not because we walked away, because we finished. We undid every one of the provinces we... What about the Night Mother? Valet frowned. Have you worked for Gazelle? I thought you wanted to get a wish to have your bodies restored or something. It was an arranged partnership she set up that would be beneficial to us both. Uh, Felicity looked down. Our ghouls were compatible enough that we could easily work side by side, and that's what the Night Mother asked us to do. I'm afraid I can't tell you what Gazelle is really after. His stated goals and actions are too self-contradictory to make any sense of, but I can't say that what he planned for tonight was to become the new Lord Everlast. Look, just forget about him. Forget it. Valet waved a hoof at her, then sat down with a thumb, shoulder sagging. So what you're telling me is you had some beefs with some dudes who didn't like bad ponies, asked me if I wanted to know the details, and because I said no, you tricked me into helping instead by staging your own murder on my ship. Is that it? Felicity's voice shrank. Yes, it is. Uh, Valet slowly groaned. Well, hey, thanks for taking me that seriously when I said I'd be happier not knowing. Both of the other mares fidgeted. Eventually, Felicity said, I can't tell whether you're being sarcastic, darling. Totally depends on whether you're actually serious. Uh, Valet raised an eyebrow. Because right now, either you're still lying or are really, really dumb. All those conversations we had, Felicity, you and me, where you told me you were pouring your heart out to me and we were talking about you guys maybe quitting with the Night Mother and changing to our side instead? Tell me how real those were. Felicity smiled regretfully. Look at it this way. Were we interested in fooling you? It would have been easy to pretend that a say survived by chance and we really were rescued victims. There's no benefit to us telling you all this. Quite a bit of loss, in fact, from a material perspective. Valet frowned. I don't get it. Are you saying you want to apologize and regret, like, traumatizing half my friends? Felicity slowly nodded, and Senese followed her lead. All right, uh, Valet scratched one foreleg with the other. So you had some sort of epiphany up there waiting for me? Or if things got rewound several hours, would you do everything the same all over again? I was hoping you wouldn't ask that, Felicity winced, looking away. Please don't force me to answer. There's no way for me to respond without being unfair to everything we've been through, or to you. You killed Herman, after all. We're trying to take out our own corrupt leaders. Only, our skills lie in getting others to do work for us ourselves rather than doing it on our own power. And working with Gazelle means he gets a share of input in the plans. Not that this wasn't on us, of course. Yeah, I did kill Herman, Valley admitted. And, look, I'm ticked about this. I'm ticked to hear you were messing with me after all I did to trust you. You know how many times my friends told me I knew you better than they did and they were trusting you because of my judgment? You know that Wallace Whitewing warned me about you and I stuck up for you because I thought you would be better? Felicity finally met her gaze. Better in what regard? Do you mean less damaged, perhaps? Less angry at this empire and its treatment of our kind? Better at being the bigger mares, not fighting back and being kind and peaceful to our enemies, even when we live under the cover of darkness and can't come out into the light? Better like how I turned around and saved Anridge when they owed me less than nothing. 
And Valet's ears briefly pressed back, then came forward again. What do you think is going to happen to the Empire if half its leadership just disappears? Will everyone go, oh, hey, maybe we shouldn't have messed with bad ponies and completely rethink their lives? Or are they going to blame us? Are new fanatics going to show up and lead the provinces in their place? We don't know, Senesi answered. There was an iteration in our plans where we thought we would die for this, so that wouldn't be our problem. And another where we thought we could stay on good terms with you and not have to worry about it either. Valet stared. You really are idiots. And what would you have done instead? Felicity softened her eyes. You're wearing a dress, darling. Something tells me you spent at least a little time trying to humiliate Stormhoof and Everlast yourself on your way up, rather than coming straight for us. They've hurt you too. You wanted to make them pay just like we did, didn't you? Valet suddenly looked at the floor. Yeah. And that's why I'm not half as thick as I could be. I wouldn't have gone in there if it hadn't been for you, sure, but if you were hostage until your kid was born, hey, I could take all the time I wanted. I figured we'd be leaving the Empire after this. We still might be. Yeah, it felt good. Right up until I realized that everything was too easy and I was probably making it easier for a reason. Felicity nodded. Gazelle has been bribing officers in Everlast for quite some time now when they dispatched soldiers to fortify Wildewind to the north in expectation that Varsidel could retaliate for the seizure of merchant airships, I may have suggested he pull some strings and have all the veterans sent up there. Got the idea from you. Well, that explains that. Valet shook her head. Not the point, though. There is a big rule about messing with folks like that. One I stuck to hard in Ironridge, even when I had no qualms about being mean to everyone. I put it something like, don't break your toys, but the important idea is you don't do anything someone can't recover from. Ruin someone's day? Neat. Ruin someone's life? Better draw a line. Throw the entire continent into chaos? Oh, she raised an eyebrow. So what if they're rulers that aren't helping bad ponies? They're still rulers and power vacuums tend to attract opportunists. Oh, she sighed. I don't care about the Empire enough to do anything about it. But for as good as you are at using your friends, you sure didn't think very far ahead. Felicity gave a wan smile. Nobody ever said we cared about the Empire either. If you had a rule like that, either you're better than we ever were, or you just didn't have it as bad, Senese added. We've never pretended to be the good guys, not to you or to anyone else. Valet narrowed her eyes. And that doesn't bother you even a little? You don't have a single dab of conscience telling you to do otherwise? I mean, I didn't, but still. Felicity's smile vanished. Oh, we do. Don't mistake us for being selfish or evil, either. We are here to apologize, after all, rather than continuing a charade to try and get in good with your happy band of friends. It's too little, too late, I know. We're sorry. Well, bananas, Valet sat down. And what are you going to do now? That's up to you, Felicity replied, without needing to think. You know, I'm pretty sure it isn't. Valet gave her a hard look. Shinesbuck was not happy with what went down. Everyone who saw it was shaken by it. Pretty sure the whole ship has heard by now, and since I gave you my trust and you lost it, I'm done being the one who vouches for you on the ship. If you still have any goodwill or intentions of being friendly toward us... Uh, she took a deep breath and sighed. Bananas, I'd love to have some sort of happy resolution come out of this thing. I won't kick you off this ship when we land in Isvaldi, but the moment we're done with Crystal, rid of Gazelle, and have the ship back to ourselves, you will get to explain to everyone precisely what you just told me, answer all their questions, and let everyone decide together whether we collectively want anything to do with you. Anything to do with someone who would scare us into attacking a neutral fortress by pretending to die on our lawn. Understood. The sisters both bowed. Valet flicked her ears. Until we're rid of those two, I'll be watching you, and you can start working on my trust by doing exactly what I say. I don't trust Gazelle not to make trouble, so if he starts, you're going to talk him down with whatever leverage you have, no matter how dirty of a trick you have to pull to stop him. 
And you're not going to draw attention to yourselves otherwise, since if Crystal needs medical help, I don't want that interrupted by an argument about your loyalty. She's not. She frowned and spun around, suddenly seeing an empty deck. I thought it was too quiet. Where did they go? Well, no one can fly in this weather, Felicity sighed. And seeing as they're not on deck and there's a rear door below, I imagine they went inside. End of chapter 740